Hello, my name is Karen. Welcome to the Aurora Public Library District. Tonight's presentation is from Kristen from Making Mealtime Memories. You should have received the two recipes she's going to be showing us this evening. And after the program, uh, you will be receiving a survey in your email within the next one or two days. Again, this is being recorded, so if you needed to change your name, please go ahead and do so. And now I'm going to turn it over to Kristen. Thank you so much, Karen. Hi, everyone. My name is Kristen Slick with the Classroom Kitchen, Making Mealtime Memories. And I am super excited to be here with you tonight. The weather has held out, which I'm happy about. I did a grilling program a couple of weeks ago and it did not hold out. So I was in my own kitchen doing some grilling class stuff. But tonight we get to be outside in the real life grilling situation. It is super duper sweaty out here. So if you see me playing with my hair a little more than normal, it's because it's just sticking to me all over. <laughs> um, but otherwise, if there's for some reason you can't hear me, um, it is slightly windy, but I do have AirPods in, so it should be able to catch my voice over the sound outside. Um, I also have a Metro train that runs through my backyard and it is rush hour. So I might have to pause for a minute or mute myself for a second once that train runs by. But other than that, let's get started with our grilling class tonight. Again, my name is Kristen Slick with The Classroom Kitchen. I've been a cooking instructor since 2015 and I just love food. I love making um, sure people have the confidence and the abilities to cook in their own kitchens and in their outdoor kitchens. So today we're going to go over 10, my top 10 grilling tips. And as we go over these top 10 grilling tips, feel free to use the chat if you have any questions or need me to clarify anything. And we're going to be making two recipes. We're going to be doing a flatbread or like a, yeah, like a grilled veggie pizza. Um, and then we're also going to be doing a fun, quick dessert. It's a s'mores dip. So something just fun and easy and very summery, right? Again, feel free to use the chat. I love being able to interact with you guys. Um, it makes it feel a little more personable. Plus, it's your class, right? So it's your time to engage, ask questions, um, or throw some comments in there as well. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. So the very first thing I need you to realize about outdoor grilling is sometimes it's a little bit intimidating. However, you bring a lot of the same skills that you have inside of your kitchen. And my kitchen window is that window right there. So if you see me point, that's why. The same things that you do inside your kitchen, you're going to bring outside to your grill. The first thing that we absolutely need to do with our grill is let it warm up. Okay, just like we preheat an oven or preheat a skillet on top of our, our, our stove, we need to let our grill warm up too. And typically we need to let it preheat for about 10 to 15 minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. So then that way it's nice and hot when we actually need to start putting some of our ingredients on the grill. All grills kind of, um, I'm gonna be using a gas grill tonight. It's what I like to use. Um, it's very quick. Uh, I don't have to worry about the charcoal. Charcoal takes about 25 to 30 minutes to preheat before you're able to use it. Whereas a gas grill, you can get away with about a 10 minute preheat time. Um, very, I'm a very busy, um, mom and wife. And we, uh, I actually just dropped my son off at hockey practice to come teach you guys the class tonight. Um, and so there's a, always a lot going on. And so I appreciate efficiency for my outdoor kitchen. Okay. So again, all grills are going to preheat a little bit differently, but typically you're going to turn on the gas, make sure that your gas propane tank is turned on and you'll go ahead and light it all three, two, three burners. However many burners you have, you're going to preheat all of them. Okay. Um, so it, it's going to give you the best results when you preheat. Um, it sears your food on contact and it helps prevent sticking Fire up your grill, let it heat up for 10 or 15 minutes um, until it's pretty scorching hot. And then you're going to turn down the temperature to the appropriate cook temperature that your recipe wants you to cook on. Um, so if your recipe is uh, says it needs high heat, that's typically about 500-ish degrees, okay, 450 to 500. If it's going for a medium high heat, we're going at about 450. If it's medium heat, we're going at about 400. Medium low is about 350 and low heat is about 300, okay? So if you notice I dropped in about 50, 50 degree increments through all of those, I'll repeat them one more time. High heat, if a recipe says cook on high heat, 
that's about 500 degrees ish between 450 and 550 so you kind of have this little range medium high is going to be about four um about 450 medium is about 400 medium low is about 350 low is about 300. now speaking of different heats um there is a difference between backyard grilling and backyard barbecuing backyard grilling is usually shorter periods of time things that are going to get done relatively quickly and within about 20 minutes barbecuing is lower slower heat that usually takes at least an hour or more so is anybody going to call the grill or barbecue police on you if you interchange the words no but in the culinary world there is indeed a difference grilling is fast higher heat barbecuing is typically lower slower heat okay the next thing you want to do after it's preheated is we're going to clean our grill grates okay and the cleaning the grill grates is going to happen both at the very beginning and very end of your grill session I like to use a wooden scraper when I clean my grill grates. Um, it's going to be easiest to clean when it's hot. Um, and you're going to just re basically remove any charred bits of food that are left on your grill grates. It's kind of like, you know, you wouldn't use a dirty pan, right? You wouldn't use a pan that has other stuff on it before you put more food in it. Um, and then again, you're going to do it as soon as you're done cooking. Again, it's a hot grill. You can get a lot of that food off of it. I like, again, to use a wooden grill scraper. Um, the wooden grill scraper doesn't leave little metal bristles in your grill, which actually leads to a lot of ER visits because there's bristles that get stuck in your esophagus. Whereas the, the wooden one, this guy's about three years old. And if you can tell, he has some pretty good life left of him. Okay, so it's kind of cool how it ends up forming to the shape of your grill. Um, and again, just rubs down all those charred bits of food. So a wooden grill tool is a great investment. Um, I think this is honestly only 15 to $20 as it is, and it's gonna last a lot longer. The only thing you have to be sure of with wooden grill scrapers is that you actually bring them inside. You don't wanna leave them outside with your grill because you don't want them to get like moldy, uh, you know, wet wood kind of smell and look and all that kind of stuff. It'll be less effective. So bring this inside when you are done with it after grilling, okay? so. That was tip number two. Tip number three is about oiling your grill. And you're gonna see me oil the grill today actually for our grilled pizza. Um, sometimes even the leanest food is gonna stick to your grill. Um, and so to help prevent that from happening, what we're gonna do is oil the grill right before it goes on. Now, biggest thing is do not spray it with any kind of aerosol spray, okay? You, if your grill is on and hot, that can be super, super dangerous. So what I like to do, and I'll show you, is I actually like to use a set of tongs and a paper towel that I'm actually gonna put some olive oil on. And I just hold it in my tongs and I'm gonna rub it across my grill. Now I'm gonna bunch it up a little bit more. This is nice and neat and folded right now. But I'm just gonna rub this across my grill grates so that it's a little bit oiled to create more of a non-stick coating, okay? But oiling your grill, is again a really great idea because you're going to prevent that sticking you're going to prevent um you're going to actually have less cleanup and you're kind of adding some flavor to your food too by oiling your grill beforehand okay so that's tip number three number one let your grill warm up number two clean your grill grates with a wooden grill scraper number three oil your grill with some oil okay so those sprays that are you know for for um for grilling and things like that, they just don't work as well. Um, and this is from years of experience, not only cooking, cook, teaching cooking, but also cooking myself. Um, and my husband is really into grilling as well. And it's just different things that we've tried and failed. And so guess what guys, just use a paper towel with some olive oil on it. Uh, it does, you don't have to get fancy or buy any kind of special products for that, okay? All right, any questions so far on the first three tips about grilling? I'll check the chat, make sure that we don't have anything going on over there. Perfect, looks good. If you do, feel free to throw it up there and I'm happy to answer it as we go, all right? Number four, make sure you're keeping your grilling stuff, your outdoor kitchen sanitary. And by that, what I mean is anything that held any raw meat. Now we're not using raw meat today, 
But anything that held raw meat, make sure you bring it into the house, wash it or grab a new platter or plate in order to transfer your food. Also, if you're going to be using um, tongs for say veggies and chicken, I would use two separate tongs, one for the chicken, one for the veggies. Um, so make sure that you keep your area sanitary. Again, a lot of the concepts that we use in our regular kitchen, we still need to use outside for the most effective grilling practices and to get the best tasting food. Okay, so make sure you keep your area sanitary. Now, um, a lot of times people say, well, yeah, like there's burgers and hot dogs and sausages and grilled chicken and pork chops and steaks and all that. But what if I want to do like more delicate food? Like, like I just mentioned veggies, which we're going to do today or fish um, or seafood in general, more delicate things on the grill. What I would recommend then is actually in order to keep it from falling through, this is tip number five, is to get yourself a grill mat or a grill stone. And I have two examples to be able to show you. I'm actually not gonna use either today because my vegetables are chunky enough to sit right on the grates. Um, but if you had something that was a little bit more delicate, you absolutely could use something like a grill stone, okay? And so this is actually grill safe. This is actually for a grill. Um, and it does have to be marketed for grill use because grills sometimes have hot spots on them and they can get upwards of 700, 750 degrees. So if you're using just like a regular clay stone from your kitchen, that might not work and you might end up cracking it. So make sure that it's heat resistant for grills. You can also get a grill mat and these are a little bit more flexible. I do have, if you notice, there's little slits around the edges. Um, I do have like a little carrying tray that I can put this in, or I can just put this right on my grill. Now, the difference between these two is this is going to be kind of like more of holding um, like kind of the heat, like I'm thinking like, you know, the deconstructed fajitas that you get at like chilies and stuff like that. So you're going to kind of do like a whole, you're using this almost like as a cooktop, right? For your grill. Train is going to go by here in just a second. So I'm just going to put you guys on mute for one second so that we don't catch all that train noise. Luckily, they don't blow the whistle. It just gets loud for a second. All right, the engine went by, so we're good to go. The grill mat is again going to be for, um, I like to use the grill mat more for like fish and um, seafood and, or like shrimp or like, uh, like mushrooms, things like that, that are like more delicate. This will actually still give you grill marks. The way that this is manufactured, it actually still catches the grill marks through the grill mat, but it allows it to cook without falling through the grates, okay? So that's tip number five, is I highly recommend getting grill mat and or a grill stone, okay? And there's lots of these on Amazon. These are specifically from Pampered Chef. Um, I'm a huge Pampered Chef fan, so I get a lot of their stuff. Um, I know... Um, uh, William Sonoma carries a couple like grill uh, stones. Um, so does Weber Grill. Weber Grill has a lot of great accessories for, for pretty reasonably reasonable prices as well. Okay, so that's tip number five, using grill mats or grill stones in order to prevent your food from falling through. Okay, just like you would do. You wouldn't just cook over a hot flame on your, on your oven or on your stove top without say a skillet. Okay, so sometimes you do need a couple extra helpers with your grill, your outdoor kitchen, all right? So we're gonna kind of pause at this point for a second because I do wanna get um, some of our food on the grill. We're gonna make a grilled veggie pizza today. And I'm gonna kind of situate you guys, let's see if I can get you this way for a little bit better viewing of like the grill. I'm gonna drop you down here. I don't want to get too close because I don't want my camera to like get super hot on the grill. All right. So what we're going to do is my pizza um, is a two-step process. The first step is actually grilling the veggies. And the second step is grilling the dough. The veggies we're going to grill over direct heat. Okay. And I believe we're going to do medium heat. Let me actually double check the recipe before I turn anything down. We're gonna do a medium heat and we're gonna grill that those veggies over a medium heat. So we're gonna turn this down just like we would on the stovetop to like a medium level. 
and we're gonna open the lid, okay? When we open the lid, a lot of this heat is gonna escape, which is fine because we need it to cool down a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and clean those grill grates and get any charred food off of here. I think we just did burgers on here over the weekend. So probably some burger flavor and burger bits on here. Perfect, put that to the side. And what I did with my veggies is I have them already cut. Um, so I actually do a lot of my prep inside and then bring it outside. So my veggies, I have some squash, some yellow squash, or you can do green zucchini. And I have some asparagus. I cut the squash into planks so that I actually, I can touch them with my fingers because this isn't raw meat. They're actually nice and thick because we're actually gonna continue to chop them down. We don't, it doesn't matter how big they are right now. We just want them big enough so that they don't fall through the grates. So we're gonna put this, I sprayed it with a little bit of oil, salted them a little bit. We're gonna throw this on the direct medium heat and we're gonna grill them for a few minutes so that they soften and get those nice grill marks because that's what we want the flavor on our pizza to be. So I'm gonna get this yellow squash right over direct heat. Now, when I say direct heat, that means all the flames are on, okay? It's like that flame broiledness, right? If I have indirect heat, which we're actually gonna do our pizza dough with, that actually creates more of an oven atmosphere. And it's gonna end up, um, we're gonna turn off one of our burners. And one of, we're not gonna have direct heat right on our pizza dough. We're actually gonna create more of an oven atmosphere, like I said. All right, so since these are just veggies, I can essentially reuse this plate if I needed to. Um, so I'm not super worried about this, but if there was raw meat on here, um, I would absolutely change out my, my plate and my utensils, all right? So from here, nice medium heat, we're gonna close the lid and we're gonna let those go for a few minutes. Now the pizza dough that I made, I'm gonna grab that. This is included in your recipe as well. This is a super simple five minute pizza dough. Um, so I made this inside again. It doesn't have any yeast in it, but it does have baking soda and baking powder in it, okay, the, which is our rising agent. It also has flour, salt, and Greek yogurt, okay? So the Greek yogurt is our, our acid. It's like our culture that's going to activate our baking soda in here. Baking powder is already pre-activated by adding um, cornstarch and a couple other things to it. So we're activating that with the Greek yogurt. We double up and we get a really nice, um, light fluffy crust. So this is going to be um, cooked over indirect heat. We're going to end up turning one of the burners off and I'll show you guys how to assemble this grilled pizza here shortly after we get our veggies all chopped up and ready to go on top of our pizza. Okay. Do we have any questions? Double check the chat while we're waiting for our veggies to cook up. That looks good. Awesome. All right. So since we don't need to worry too much about the grill, I'm going to pick you guys back up and talk to you this way again. So now we're on um, tip number four. Knocked one of my earbuds right out of my ear. Sorry about that, guys. And like I said, if you see me touching my face, it's because I am outside and sweaty and sometimes my hair gets stuck to my face. So I apologize if I'm showing a little bit more movement than I normally would in my kitchen. All right, so for tip number six, so we had five tips already. We had let your grill warm up, clean your grill grates, oil your grill, which we don't have to oil it right now because we have our pre-oiled veggies. We will oil it when we get our pizza crust on there. Keep it sanitary, keep your food from falling by investing in a grill mat or a grill stone. Number six, keep a lid on it. Okay. I always laugh at those Father's Day commercials or the Memorial or Labor Day commercials when you see somebody standing at a grill with it wide open and they're like constantly touching their food and flipping it. I know it's for dramatic effect, but the culinary uh, person, the culinary knowledge in me just like freaks out when I see this happen because they're letting all of that heat escape from their grill. It's like opening and closing your oven a dozen times during the baking and cooking process. You don't want to do that. You want to keep it nice and steady, okay? You should really only be opening your grill cover. Um, set a timer. Timers are a great thing to have uh, when you're grilling, when you need to flip your food, or if you're checking for doneness, okay? And checking your for doneness leads me to my next tip, which is investing in a meat thermometer, Okay, so I'll talk about that in just a second. But 
don't open and close your grill. Okay. Leave it closed. There is an oven effect going on within your grill that you need in order to cook things properly. Okay. So I'm not checking my veggies until I know I need to flip them, which is going to be probably here in about another minute. Okay. We still want some crunch to our veggies. We don't necessarily want them mushy. Okay. We want them just nicely charred and we still want some brightness to them. So we are going to be opening this up in just a second. I'm going to flip everything over, let it finish cooking on the other side. Then we're going to actually cook over some indirect heat for our pizza dough. So checking for doneness, get a meat thermometer. Okay. This changes not only your outdoor kitchen game, but your indoor kitchen game. A meat thermometer is so, so important to make sure that not only are you not undercooking your food, but you're not overcooking your food, okay? Uh, my husband grew up with a grandmother who basically cooked everything to death. And he actually thought he didn't like a lot of food because of the way she cooked it as, a, as an adult until I started cooking for him and used my meat thermometer and had much better flavor and texture and all of the foods that I was cooking for him. So meat thermometers. Um, this is an instant read thermometer, which I love. It reads it in about three to five seconds. Um, so whew, we, got, we got a leaf trying to join our video here. Um, so I like the instant read one. Um, also on here, it shows us like temperatures of medium, or uh, you know, rare to well done. Um, for chicken, turkey, beef, lamb, fish, pork. Okay, so those are really great to have too. We won't be using this today because we don't have any meat we're cooking, um, but meat thermometers are so important because every grill cooks a little differently. So making sure that you have a meat thermometer where it will actually give you the exact reading is again, super important. So very, very basic cooking needs outdoors, but pretty essential in my opinion, okay? So we're gonna open this up. We're gonna give all these guys a little flip here. I'll show you a couple of them. Nice, nice grill marks on here. Here's a piece of our squash. So really nice grill marks on here. Again, we're just still leaving it nice and bright. Whew. The heat from the outside and the heat from the grill is combining for a lethal, lethal uh, combination right now. We're gonna give our asparagus a little turn. When I prepped my asparagus, guys, I cut about an inch or two inches off the bottom. I know some of you, I've heard, I used to do this too. Um, if you take a piece of asparagus and you try to bend it and snap it, that's where you're supposed to cut it. But the problem is, is asparagus, especially where even where you need to keep it, is incredibly bendy and snappy. Um, and you're going to end up snapping off a lot more than you intend to. And you're going to end up with a lot less asparagus. So I just take my knife and I cut off the bottom edges an inch or two. I look at the bottom of the stalk and the bottom of the stalk should not look white or um, dry um, or brown. It should look nice and bright and green. And so if you cut it like an inch off and you're still noticing, you're still kind of getting a real woody end, just cut up a little bit more. Okay. So super, super easy. Karen, we're actually gonna be adding some tomatoes to this as well. You could do artichokes, you could do green pepper, you can do any combination of grilled veggies that you want. This is essentially just a veggie pizza that we're making, not heavy on the cheese, it's actually really heavy on the veggies and that flavor and that color. Um, so I would use artichokes, zucchini, um, I would do, um, like tomatoes, green peppers, onions. You can do a yellow onion or a red onion or both if you like them that much. Um, you can do different colors of tomatoes. You can do eggplant, um, so many different kinds of veggies. The only veggies I probably wouldn't use, um, you can even use broccoli if you want to. I probably wouldn't use cauliflower. That's pretty a pretty hearty vegetable. Um, and I wouldn't use probably like Brussels sprouts, like cabbage type types of stuff. I would use things that can kind of get softer on the grill for you um, and that you can actually chop up and enjoy on a, on a piece of pizza. Mushrooms you can use, um, black out. I mean, anything really that you want to put on there, you can absolutely do, all right? Um, but except a couple of those like really too hearty vegetables, uh, probably cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, green beans. Like I probably wouldn't do that either, okay? Good question though, all right? So, how we doing otherwise? We're through seven tips. We have our veggies almost done. What we're gonna do with our veggies next is we're actually gonna transfer them to a bowl with some pesto. And we're actually going to um, 
chop them up. Okay. And I have these really cool salad choppers. You can get them on Amazon. Um, they're called salad choppers, but I don't really use them for a salad. I use them for everything else, like pulled pork, shredded beef, chopping vegetables, chopping up pasta when my kids were little. Um, so I'll show you those. And again, you can grab those on Amazon. I do have them from Pampered Chef as well. Um, Amazon actually started carrying a very, very similar version of them, but they're more colorful. So if you like colorful tools, there's colorful versions on Amazon as well. All right. So let me go ahead and grab my bowl. So these are the salad choppers. Okay. They're a two bladed scissor. Okay. And this is what I'm going to use. So I actually just get to put them in my veggies and rough chop them up, which I think is amazing. Okay. So we have our bowl here. Open this up. And we're going to just take all our veggies. They're nice and charred um, and kind of just softened. They're not that bright, bright green and yellow anymore. You can tell they're cooked. Um, but they still have like a nice um, consistency, consistency to them. They're not like mushy. They're not falling through the grates, okay? Still nice and bright and vibrant. And what I'm going to do for indirect heat on a three burner grill, I'm going to turn off my middle burner, okay? So I just have burners going on either side, which means that I'm creating an oven atmosphere for my pizza, okay? So I'm going to take this, okay? I'm going to give this a chop. And this is why I love these choppers. Look at this. Nice and hot. I'm just literally running these choppers through it to create really nice bite-sized rustic rough pieces. I don't have to wait till it cools. And everything is nice and chopped down for the top of my pizza. While this is still warm, I'm going to take my, while this is still warm, I'm going to take my cherry tomatoes and add those in too, to kind of like, like steam them a little bit. <laughs> we don't want them necessarily rough chopped, but I am going to kind of let them kind of steam in there. And then I'm going to actually take some pesto. We don't actually have sauce on this, um, this pizza. We actually just have pesto. Um, so that's going to serve as our sauce tonight. So I'm just going to scoop some out here and give it a little stir. Okay, so we have this, and I'm just going to flip the pesto in there. So that's essentially going to be our flavoring, our sauce that is going to go right on top of our pizza crust. You can add more pesto to the pizza to the pizza crust if you want to, or you can. Um, um, add pizza sauce if you want to. Um, you don't have to just use pesto. Again, you don't have to use pesto at all. You can go ahead with some marinara, some crushed tomatoes if you want to. But again, I like the full cherry tomatoes. You can slice them up if you want to, but they really kind of tend to kind of soften when you put them with the warm veggies. Okay. So I have a, this smells so good guys with this pesto in here. Um, so we're going to let this cool a little bit to the side while we get our pizza crust next on the um, grill. Now we need our paper towel here because we do need to oil our grates. We don't want our pizza crust sticking. We are gonna cook one side of our pizza crust and then we are going to flip it and then add our ingredients. So you don't wanna add just a raw pizza crust right on top of your grates and add veggies right on top. You're gonna end up with undercooked crust one side's gonna be really, really well done. The other side's gonna be barely done. So I like to cook one side and then when I flip it, that's when you top it and then you end up having this really beautiful grilled pizza, okay? So I have my paper towel here. I'm gonna take my tongs, open this up and I'm gonna just oil down the section where my, where my um, pizza crust is gonna go. And again, it's just a five minute dough, super, super simple, very easy, literally put together in five minutes, okay? I did keep it floured a little bit just so that my towel didn't stick to it. And I'm just gonna flip this. I'm gonna drag this kind of right onto the grill. And we're gonna go, let me double check. I think it's eight minutes or so. Let's see. Yep, about, it says 10 minutes, but we might be able to get away with eight minutes since we have a pretty hot grill right now. Oh, I think the train's going on the other side. I'm actually surrounded by two train lines. So 
that's on the other side of the neighborhood. All right, so we're gonna slide this on here. And again, indirect heat. We don't have direct flames right on top of our pizza dough. We have it on either side, creating an oven effect. And surprisingly, a lot of things cook like that. So now you know how to do it, okay? So we're gonna put that to the side as well. We got 10 minutes with that. I'm gonna flip you guys around the other side so this leaf doesn't try to keep getting into our video today. <laughs> Just shows you, shows you guys that I'm really truly outside, right? All right, so we have seven tips that we've gone over. We're gonna go over a few more, and then we're also gonna start in on our fun dessert as well, okay? So we have, we're gonna just do a quick rundown. Let your grill warm up, clean your grates, oil your grill, keep it sanitary, keep your food from falling with grill mats or grill stones, put a lid on it, leave it closed. Like I'm not gonna open this until I know that the, the, the crust is ready to be flipped. I'm not gonna let the, the heat in and out. Check your meat's temperature, watch for flare ups, okay? So uh, oftentimes, especially when we grill um, proteins that are pretty fatty, think um, this always happens to me with sausages, uh, fatty burgers, if, especially if you're using like an 80-20 um, uh, burger patty, um, skin on chicken, things like that. Sometimes flare ups can happen on your grill. So what you're gonna wanna do is if you do have a flare up on your grill, is this is a flare up is essentially when fat catches fire. Okay, so it's not actually the food, it's actually the fat that drips down through your grates that has caught fire. So the first thing you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna want to, if you see a flare up happen, you're gonna wanna turn off the gas. Okay, so turn off the gas first. If you can, remove the food from the flare up. Okay, because you don't wanna keep feeding the flare up. So you wanna remove the feed from the flare up and close your lid. Okay, and without oxygen, without um, actual gas going, the flare up should subside. Okay, now if it does not subside, then what you're going to want to do is if you don't have a kitchen fire extinguisher, then you're going to get some baking soda uh, from your pantry and you're just going to throw the baking soda and it essentially acts as a fire extinguisher on the flare up. Okay, so again, turn your gas off. Remove the food if you can, if it's safe enough, and then close your lid. If that doesn't work, if it's still flaring up, if you reopen your lid, the food's removed, the gas is off, and it's still going, get some baking soda um, from your pantry and, or from your refrigerator if you have some in there to keep it fresh. And really quick, kind of from a distance, kind of toss the baking soda right on it, and that will help as well. Now, in order to reduce flare ups, cooking with a grill mat or a grill stone will help you. Um, cooking with lean meat um, and removing that extra skin or fat, okay? Now, again, that doesn't always happen, especially when you have like the food that you're, that makes it taste good, right? That makes things taste good. So if you have the 80-20 beef, if you have the, the fatty sausages, if you have skin on chicken, then you just need to be more aware of that. Speaking of that, another thing that can cause flare-ups are hot spots on your grill. So this is tip number nine make sure you even out your food, okay? Um, this is a relatively new grill that we have and it re cooks relatively evenly. But I bet you next season, now when it gets a little bit older, um, it's going to cr start creating some hot spots just based on how the grill grates are, you know, kind of wear down, how the grill plates wear down, things like that. The grill that we just got rid of um, had some extreme hot spots on the right side. Um, and I And if you cook enough with it, you'll start to learn the hot spots on your grill. And what we would do is if we were grilling everything across the grill, we would put everything across, so say chicken, but the chicken that was on the right side, when we went to flip it, we put it on the left side and that left side chicken went to the right side. So make sure tip number nine, you're evening out your food. Um, and again, hot spots are bound to happen with any type of grill. If you notice things aren't cooking evenly, make sure you're switching sides, front to back, corner to corner, wherever you need it to be. If you're cooking smaller pieces of chicken or smaller pieces of protein and you're noticing that the smaller pieces are done or cooked, move them up to a top rack, okay? So just be aware and cognizant. Some people think grilling is like a set it and forget it kind of thing, and that's absolutely not true. Sometimes you actually have to pay more attention to it than you would in your inside kitchen, okay? And number 10, tip number 10, let your food rest, okay? This is super important, even in your own kitchen. Let your food rest after you cook it, okay? Your flavors um, are going to 
redistribute so much more evenly through proteins, um, even through the pizza. Like I'm not going to cut into that and try to eat it right away. We're going to let it sit and rest and meld. And then you're going to eat it after it kind of comes to a better temperature and everything redistributes within it. I even say this when I do my baking classes, you're not going to take a pan of cookies out of the oven and pick, scoop up a cookie and eat it right away. What do we do with those cookies? We let them cool on the, usually on the cookie sheet for at least five minutes before we move them to a cooling rack and continue to let them cool. You're going to do the same thing with your actual food that you're cooking on the grill. Let your meat rest, let your food rest. When you let your meat rest, um, going back to the temperature, okay, gauging it. So say you want um, a medium rare steak, okay? A medium rare steak is 135 degrees. As soon as it hits like 130 degrees, I'm going to start, I'm going to think about, I'm going to actually take it off the grill, okay? Because you're going to have residual cook time on your food. And when it rests, it's actually going to continue cooking and get to the temperature that you want it to be, okay? So I would highly recommend, again, meat thermometer so you know when to take it off so you're not overcooking it. If somebody indeed wants a medium rare steak, they're getting a medium rare steak or a medium rare burger or whatever the case may be, okay? Um, again, let it rest, tent it with some foil, let it rest for 10 minutes, and then you can definitely dig into it after that 10 minutes, okay? So that being said, I think we're about at our time where we want to flip our pizza crust. So I'm going to go ahead and open this now. You see how I was patient? I didn't mess with it. We're going to go ahead and open this. You're going to see that it is starting to fluff up nicely here, which is what we want. Since it's oiled, I should be able to take my tongs and just scoop underneath it and flip it. Okay, so we're just going to get under here, give it a little flip, and hopefully you guys can see those grill marks on there nice and golden. So this side is completely cooked through. Now we're gonna top this and we're gonna actually come back with our veggies, close the grill up, let everything melt and actually let that bottom half cook as well. Okay, so we're gonna grab our veggies. My tomatoes have softened just the way I wanted them to with these hot veggies. I wanna make sure I don't have to put the cheese down first because sometimes uh, veggie pizzas like this actually tell you to put the cheese down first. Um, so we're going to actually, nope, we're going to load it up with our veggies and then cover it with cheese. I just have some Parmesan, but you can also do um, a mozzarella cheese. You can do a fresh mozzarella if you wanted to as well, depending again on what kind of veggies you're putting on here. I'm trying to nestle my tomatoes kind of in. Now this is a pretty large pizza. This is about a mm, 10 inch pizza. Okay. Um, so I am going to be able to fit most of my veggies on here, if not all of them. Definitely shareable, especially when you have the top completely loaded up. Yum! So delicious. So all our veggies are on there. We're going to grab some grated Parmesan cheese. Get that on the top. Again, you can definitely do mozzarella if you want. But I like the like the saltiness and the kind of the hardness of the, of the Parmesan over like a creamy, melty mozzarella. So I think that is going to be a really good fit. So we're going to go ahead and close that. And that's going to go for just another little bit until that cheese is nice and melted. Okay. Another really fun recipe. And we're actually going to throw this on the grill at the same time as the pizza because it is an indirect heat recipe as well. We're going to do a really fun dessert really quick. It's a s'mores dip. And literally all you need to do, my chocolate is actually melty from sitting outside. So it's going to get a head start. I have these adorable little cast iron skillets and these are so fun to make cobblers. These actually fit in air fryers too. So if you like you doing like little mini individual things, um, you can absolutely get these little mini cast irons. These are like five inch cast irons. We're going to put this on the grill. I have about a cup of chocolate chips in here. We're going to melt this down. Then we're going to add some mini marshmallows on top. And you're going to have scoopable with graham crackers or pretzels or fruit or whatever you want it to be with right out of a little cast iron skillet. So really rustic, fun summer treat that we're going to throw on the grill and create as we're creating this beautiful veggie pizza as well. I'm going to mute you guys. There's another train going by.
All right, so the pizza is on there. Um, again, I opened it just to put the, the uh, s'mores on there. Another great thing you can do is grilling up fruit. I love grilling pineapple and then drizzling it with some honey, maybe a little bit of like minced um, mint with it. That is super refreshing and delicious. You get really nice char marks on there. You can also use a grill mat if you want to or do it directly on the grill, but a really nice caramelization. Um, I've never tried it yet, but I have seen um, grilled watermelon. I've seen grilled romaine lettuce and iceberg lettuce to create these grilled salads that you can do. So if you're adventurous and you want to try different textures and flavors, I highly recommend just taking some of our seasonal produce that we have, throwing it on the grill, see what happens, see what you like. Okay. Um, it doesn't again have to, it doesn't, if it doesn't work out, then you know it better for next time. Right. Um, but chances are we usually like those flavors that are happening on the grill. All right. So again, with that cast iron skillet, our fun dessert, we're literally just melting chocolate and using this outdoor kitchen, this outdoor oven in order to do that. Okay. Um, again, marshmallows will melt those on top and then you can serve it up on a platter and everyone can enjoy s'mores without actually creating a campfire. All right. Any other questions or any comments or anything that you guys want clarification on for grilling that I didn't necessarily cover. I'm going to have kind of a bonus tip for you guys too. So um, I'll just wait to see if there's any chats that pop up and then I'll go through my bonus tip. All right. So I know I've been really focusing on um, gas grills because that's what I, I use most frequently. And I think it's what a lot of people use. However, if you're interested in charcoal grilling, I do have a couple tips to go with that as well. Um, so if you are going to be charcoal grilling, you will need coal briquettes, charcoal briquettes. Um, and you need to, in order to set it up for direct cooking, you're going to need about 50 briquettes. Um, and it takes about 25 to 30 minutes for it to preheat. You know that it's preheated when your briquettes turn to ash, okay? Um, so we are not cooking over um, the briquettes until they are ash, okay? And that's oftentimes the hardest, hottest part of the fire where all that heat is held. So you're gonna light about 50 briquettes in a pyramid shaped pattern. It's gonna take about 25 to 30 minutes. You're gonna spread them out into an even layer and you're gonna have direct cooking, okay? Now, if you want indirect cooking with a charcoal grill, what you're gonna do is um, you're gonna position a drip pan in the center bottom of your charcoal grill and you're gonna spread your hot coals around that, that, um, that drip pan. That way, when it's, when it's cooking, you don't have direct heat, okay? It's more, you know, redirected. And again, creating that oven atmosphere, just like we have an oven atmosphere happening right now for our pizza crust and our melted chocolate, okay? So you're, you're gonna wanna create that indirect heat by creating a hole in the center of your coals, um, spreading those around the edges, and that's that for charcoal grilling. Again, charcoal grilling, um, with that, you actually don't need to turn your food, okay? So kind of a bonus with that, with indirect cooking, you won't need to do that um, for, uh, for the indirect heat on charcoal grills. Okay. Uh, Rosa asked any tips for grilling a whole fish. Now for a whole fish, um, depends on how large it is. Okay. But I'm assuming that you mean it's going to be pretty big. Um, I've done fish fillets, but I typically do fish fillets either wrapped in foil or on my grill mat. Um, because I like to have those grill marks. If you're doing a full fish, you might be able to get away with putting it directly on the grill and just oiling it ahead of time and seasoning it ahead of time. So if it's literally a whole fish, then you can go ahead and just make sure you oil that, season it, go ahead and put that right on there. I would also cook it, ooh, I would also cook it over indirect heat um, because oftentimes with those, um, you're not probably going to flip your fish, okay? So because you don't want it to fall apart, you're gonna kind of want to put it on and then take it off. So you're probably going to go for an indirect heat source with that whole fish as well. Typically, when I do any kind of fish, even if it is really um, uh, firm fish, okay, like salmon or something like that, I do like to use a grill mat, a piece of tin foil, something like that, because I want it, like all those juices to be contained. Um, so personally, if I did it, I'd probably put a piece of tin foil down, especially if my grill mat wasn't necessarily big enough to actually kind of indirect heat it like almost an oven in there. 
um, but not having, but having that grill flavor happening to it as well. So those are my best tips for whole fish. Um, I hope that answers that question. Um, Karen, do you have any tips for using wood chips? Karen, I don't personally use wood chips, so I don't actually have an answer to that question. Um, we don't typically like the flavor of it, so we've never really cooked with it. You're welcome, Rosa. Um, the wood chips, though, I do need to, I do believe need to be wet um, when you use them. We do actually have a package of wood chips in the house that my husband got for Christmas from my brother, but we haven't experimented with them. We're not a big like cedary flavor. Like I, I don't mind it, but my husband definitely doesn't like it. Neither do my kids so much that smoky, smoky flavor. Um, so really with wood chips, you just would read the directions that come with them because they're all a little different. Some of them need to be soaked beforehand. Some of them you use dry. Um, some of them need to be like on a, on a, um, and a drip pan off to the side. So really I would um, follow the manufacturer's directions for those and just experiment with the flavors that you like. Do you like cedar? Do you like mesquite? Do you like, I don't know what other ones are out there. Um, so I don't have too much experience with that, but those are the kinds of things that I've seen um, and have heard people talk about in the culinary world if they were to use wood chips in their grill, okay? All right, let's give this a quick check. Looks like our pizza's about done and melted. Let me grab my little scraper here to actually stir up our chocolate. Our chocolate is completely melted in our cast iron pan as well. So that is nice and melty. And what I'm gonna do is actually just take some mini marshmallows here. I'm gonna throw them on top and we're gonna get these kind of nice and melted and puffed up. We're gonna actually take our pizza off and I'll move um, our s'mores dip kind of more towards the middle of the um, the grill here. Grab my pan, my plate. I'm actually gonna grab my oven mitts too. I always keep these handy, especially when I'm making recipes like this, just in case I have a slip up and I don't try to grab it with my hand. Um, I've experienced many burns over my culinary career and I'm not too ashamed to say that I need some grill mitt or some uh, oven mitts sometimes, okay? And these are nice silicone ones that are washable. All right, so we're gonna kind of scoop in under here, grab my plate, and I'm just gonna kind of slide this off. And then using again, my oven mitt, I'm gonna take my s'mores dip, move that more to the center and let that finish cooking off. Look at our pizza, so good. You can add rotisserie chicken to this. You could add grilled chicken to this if you wanted to, but I thought keeping it nice and simple would be great. Um, with just some really pretty seasonal vegetables. You can dab some more pesto on top of this if you wish, um, or if you want, or a couple dollops of uh, marinara or however you want to serve it up. But I mean, the options are endless with this recipe, especially during this season, right? Because we have all kinds of nice seasonal produce. So our pizza looks amazing. And then we're just going to take our little tray here, which I already have some graham crackers on. We're just going to put it right on this. This is a stoneware tray, so it retain it actually can handle the heat. So just be careful if you are going to move it to another tray. Make sure because the cast iron is coming from a hot source, it's going to be hot. You want to make sure it can go on something that can handle the heat. Okay, so that's going to go right on here. Serve it up with some graham crackers or um, fruit or pretzels or whatever you want to serve it with and you get a nice melty pull without actually having to have a bonfire, right? Nice s'mores dip, okay? So this about kind of wraps up our class for tonight until our s'mores dip is over. I hope you guys learned a lot. You feel more confident about bringing your food outside and enjoying the summer weather, even today, though today is literally, I have sweat pouring down my back right now because it is so hot. But this isn't normal, right? This is you going probably back in and out of the house or enjoying a nice cold drink with your grilling, um, not literally standing here the whole time and next to a hot grill, okay? <laughs> um, this is like standing next to a hot oven the whole time too, right? Um, it's what I signed up for. So if you want to follow me on Facebook, I have a Facebook page called Classroom Kitchen. Um, I actually will post pictures of our finished product here tonight and, and uh, tag Aurora 
excuse me, Aurora Public Library, so that you guys know this is the food that we cooked for your class. This is also being recorded, so I'm sure you'll you'll be able to view this again if you wish or share it with friends and family. Um, and I also have a website, makingmealtimememories.com, and you can sign up for my weekly newsletter. I send it out on Friday afternoons. Not only do I give you at least four like family friendly recipes a week, um, but I also will post all of my upcoming classes. This class, of course, was broadcasted on that newsletter as well um, and some other ones that are coming up this summer. So feel free to sign up for that as well. All right. But again, I hope you guys had a great time. You learned something new. Um, and again, you're confident enough to bring some of your indoor kitchen stuff to your outdoor kitchen stuff. OK, let's see what this s'mores dip. Oh, my gosh. This s'mores dip looks amazing. Like picture perfect, guys. The, the marshmallows are even toasted. Look at this. Oh, it's like not the best picture. I wish I could. It's hard to see. It looks pretty bright white in your camera, but I swear they're toasted. I swear they're toasted. So we're gonna put that right here. And look at, we have a cute little, like little appetite, a little dessert that everyone can share and enjoy some nice chocolatey goodness. Let me see if I can get a little pull on here with my graham cracker. Ooh, my graham crackers feel soggy because it's super humid outside. So I don't think I'm gonna get a pull because they're not super crunchy. So what I'm gonna do here then too, remember we're gonna clean our grill at the very end. So typically what I like to do is I like to make sure that all my burners are lit. I turn it all back up to kind of let it really warm up whatever was left on the grill. I'm going to give it one final last scrape to finish up our grilling experience for tonight. Karen, thank you so much for having me tonight. I'm so glad that the weather worked out. I hope everyone stays safe and that there's no extreme weather by you guys tonight. Um, and I hope to see you guys again soon. So thanks again, Karen. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Kristen. We appreciate it. You did a wonderful job. I've learned a lot this evening. And I hope Good. that all our customers have too. <clears throat> um, I just want to mention, I signed up for Kristen's weekly email and has a lot of great recipes. It makes meal planning much easier. So I strongly recommend that. And if you're a part of our summer reading challenge, one of the activities to do is to attend a live or virtual program. So that you have one thing right there you can cross off this evening. All right. Thanks so much. Everyone have a wonderful evening. Stay safe. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you.